share something with you brothers. And that was this thing that you hear about what's going on. I'm going to tell you what happened very quickly and very briefly because many of the brothers want to know what had happened. One of the characteristics of the people of Al-Islam, generally speaking, is that we have to try our best to be truthful. If a person is lying to get his point across, then although he may be lying and other people may not know he's lying, he should know that the haq is not with him. So he knows that something happened between him and a few people and he knows that he's lying and exaggerating. The other people may not know, but he has to be sincere and he has to know the haq is not with you or you wouldn't be lying, you wouldn't be exaggerating. And this is one of the problems with al-hawa. When I went to give the khutbah on Friday in Manchester, the city of Manchester, I was invited to give the khutbah to a mystery called Mr. the Sunnah that I've been to a long time ago. I used to go to that mystery, but I hadn't been there for years. So when we went, we wound up leaving Birmingham late, 11.30, when we were supposed to leave 11 o'clock. So anytime I'm going to be late for a khutbah especially, I become muta nervous. Muta nervous. It's an Arabic word, muta nervous. And that's just how it is. I start to speak fast if I get on the minbar and things because it's just a psychological thing. So when we arrived in Manchester, it was at 1.30 when we were close to the mission and the people kept calling me, where you at, where you at, where you at? So the sat nav sent us up this street and it was telling us we have to make a left at that street and that is the street where we're going to go. But we came by a masjid that was on this street and we saw people walking into this masjid and the area looked familiar to me. This, I said, this looks like it's around here. The brother said, yeah, yeah. The sat nav is saying, this is it. It's on this street, the front. So it was a side door here, side door. So he said, okay, you guys, me and two other brothers, get out, and I'll park the car. So because I was late, I jumped out of the car, I ran into the side door, and the bathroom was right there. I went into the bathroom, there was a line of people. I said, I'm supposed to give the khutbah today. Can I go? Can I go? They all allowed me to go. I had on my long johns and my turtleneck, and it was hot, and I was pressed. So I had to go to the bathroom. I had to take off my clothes. I was late. I did all of that. I went out. When I went into the member, into the musalla, I said, this is, uh, this is strange. I, I don't know this place. But I thought maybe they moved because the sat nav said, this is where we're at. And I, it was a perfect storm. So I got on the member and I started fiddling with the fan to make the fan work. Some old brother was sitting in the first seat and a chair said, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. I did that. I took the microphone and I got ready to say, salamu alaikum. A brother came. And he said, no, this is not the microphone. So he took the microphone. I thought he was the Mu'adhan. He's going to give me another mic. But he was looking upset. But I've seen other Mu'adhans look upset in other messages. Mu'adhans that had some issues. I thought that was a case. So I said, what are you upset for? Between him and me. He looked at me and he said, I'm not upset. But he was still looking upset. Then another brother came and he came not in a nice way. And he said, what are you doing? So I thought maybe these brothers are from the general people who don't know I'm supposed to get the khutbah, I'm scheduled. So to get up and say, that's okay, but not that way. And then I realized, oh man, I must be in the wrong masjid because I don't know this place. So I said to the people, is this not masjid of sunnah? And some of the regular people there who didn't have beers, they were smiling. I could see them in the audience. They said, no, 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 this is not masjid sunnah. So it was a strange, funny situation. Wallahi, I didn't know where I was at, so quite naturally, I apologized to the whole Jama'at, to these Muslims. I didn't know who they were. As a matter of fact, the brother who drove me there, Abu Abdullah Shaybani, he came in and he saw the commotion, and he's many times out of the frame. He's not always in the frame. He was saying, is this bro we missed you? This bro we missed you? Because he didn't know what was going on. It wasn't bro we missed you. So I said, I'm sorry to everybody. When I walked out of the door, when I left the door, Two of those brothers followed me. When I got to put my shoes on out in the corridor, one of them said to me, this is the masjid of the Salafis and the masjid of the Mubtadiyah. It's over there. Then I realized this is the masjid of the people who go overboard. The people were rough and tough. The people who, if you don't agree with them on issues, especially rulings of Sheikh Rabi and Madkhali, then they throw you outside of the Sunnah and off of the Sunnah. The Salafi of SP, the bid'ah that they're on, where they have gulu and connecting the people with, it's me against the world. It's us against the world. We 
are against the world. The Martians are going to get us. The people always have to have this frame of mind. Us against the world. We are the Sedefis. So I realized this was that mischief. So I said to the brother in Arabic, look, don't expose the regular people to this drama, the drama we have with each other. Don't expose. And then one of them said, Ukhruj, ya walik, get out, boy. He said that to me. And then Shaitan got involved on my side. And I told him that you may know who I am, but uh, you don't know me. You don't want to deal with me in that jahili way. That's what I said. That's what I said. You may know who I am, but you don't know me. You don't want to deal with me in that jahiliya way. So I gave them, I gave them what they needed. When you say something like that, you always have to be just like the uh, non-Muslims, the, um, the, these people who take your words out of context. They get anything. They're not going to say they're the first one who takes from the dictionary of bad words, mubtadiya, what it get out, so forth, so on. And even if you think someone is a mubtadiya, then what you should do is never tell someone to get out of the masjid and then to take the statements of the salaf to prove that you could tell people get out of the masjid. This is, is insanity. It's insanity. It's insanity. So what happened was I wound up leaving and I knew it wouldn't be a lot of time before they started going on the internet, the keyboard warriors that they are, that they are always trying to narrate these things to keep them in the minds of the sheep that follow them. They're at Diba, those Masakin brothers and sisters who want to be on the Sunnah, but they're blinded in thinking that that's the only way. So I was really amazed at how it turned out. And I didn't read the article that they wrote, but many people were telling me what was in the article. And I don't know how they mentioned so many other people that don't have anything to do with I, what I did on that day. But they always have to mention a Sheikh Ahmed Najmi said that. And this went over and they just bring names just out of the hat to keep repeating the same thing. A Sheikh Ahmed Najmi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, is my Sheikh. I know him better than them. I know him longer than them. So they told him a long time ago, there is a person in America who supports Abu Hassan al-Ma'rabi. What should we do with him? The Sheikh said, deal with him the way you deal with Abu Hassan al-Ma'rabi, who's a mubtadi. I don't agree with the Sheikh, Rahmatullah Ali, that Abu Hassan al-Marabi is a mubtadi. I don't agree with that. But if anybody said I was a supporter of him, they're not going to bring any delil. I'm a supporter of Ali Hassan al-Halabi. I support him. And I support what he's upon. His mistakes, we put that aside. I say that in public and I say that in private. Abu Hassan al-Marabi has some things that have happened that I don't agree with. But to say he's mubtadi, I don't say that. I didn't see some of the ulama who I look at like a Sheikh Abdul Muhsin and Abad in these affairs. And if you see that, then that's your business. So anyway, the point is, a Sheikh Ahmed Najmi said, yeah, do with him what you do with Abu Hassan and Ma'arabi. First of all, I don't support him. That's the first thing. Second of all, even if I supported him, even if I don't see him as Muqtadi, because you make him Muqtadi, I'm Muqtadi. That's a bid'ah principle that their sheikh is upon and they are upon that stuff. I'm going to bring down whoever doesn't bring that. The sheikh who says that, that's a bid'ah and I'm against that. I'm buried from that. It's not from our religion. Ali Hassan al, 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 Ali Hassan al, Ali Hassan al Halabi, a sheikh Rabi says that he's a mubtadi. A sheikh Abdul Muhsin doesn't say that he's a mubtadi. So if he supports Ali Hassan, do you do with him what you do with Ali Hassan al-Ma'rab, Ali Hassan al-Halabi? Do you do the same thing? So, Ikhwani, this stuff, uh, we thought that it was a waste of time, but because a lot of the students wanted to know what was going on. I have some kid on my Facebook that I don't even deal with. I have people who are ministers, the administrators from my Facebook. I don't deal with that Facebook that much. I send them some things, but not everything. Young brother, Sheikh, I heard something happen in Manchester. Can you tell me what happened? From a person who's good at Islam, leave it alone what doesn't concern you. What, what are you talking about? He wrote a second time. Sheikh, what happened? In, in Manchester, this is my second time asking you. Then he wrote the third time. Sheikh, if you don't answer this time, then I'm just going to believe in what they said. Who does that except young people? 
So the administrator had to write and say, listen, this is not, this is Abu Sama's Facebook page, but he doesn't deal with this Facebook like that. He oversees it, but he's not on the Facebook and in the Facebook. And who are you to say, if you don't answer, then I'm going to make this ruling and that ruling. So I'm only mentioning this, ikhwani, not for ida'at al-waqt, wasting your time, making you preoccupied with kalam fariq, but because many of the brothers want to know what had happened. And I invoke the curse of Allah upon myself and my children. Of course, it's the dyes Jews if I'm lying. And one of the good things that happened was, I had, good, I had some brothers with me. Brother from Cameroon, who's from Luton, and a brother from, uh, from uh, what's that place? Uh, Limington Spa, Limington. And the drive Abu Abdullah. And because Master the Sunnah, they give the khutbah in Arabic all the time, they force some of the English speaking people to go to that masjid, just as this masjid, Green Lane, used to force people to go to SP. When the khutbah used to be in Urdu, people said, I'm not listening to that. They will leave this place and go to SP. Some of those people were trapped and they became SP. I used to at that time tell them, go where you get benefit. Now I say, don't go to that masjid because you may get caught up into that drama. But anyway, some of those regular people who were not from there, who were from Masjid the Sunnah who were there, they witnessed what happened. But those people, they know that we don't have time to become keyboard warriors to be dealing with this stuff. This is how they stay validated. The cult, Jim Jones and those people, is us against the world. It's us against the world. The Martians are going to get us. The other people, the people of Bida is going to get us, going to get us. Hey, teach the people the religion. And the guy who gave the, who actually wrote that stuff, who actually like wrote that stuff. I mean, I don't want to make it personal or anything like that, but I don't know, Ikhwani. Nobody threw anybody out of the masjid, and I'm not a gangster or anything like that, but I don't know what is the need of that type of language. Nobody threw anybody out of the masjid. We walked out of the masjid when we were ready to walk out. May Allah Ta'ala accept it from us and from you, Ikhwani. That's what happened. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'i. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.